Hey everyone, I'm Adam Harriton, and today we are exploring the woods here in western Pennsylvania, mainly in search of mushrooms and other fungi. And so I invite you to join me for a little mid-January mushroom hunt. You know, lately we've had a lot of snow, a lot of freezing temperatures here in western Pennsylvania, but lately things are different. As you can see, if you take a look around me, not much snow is left. We've had some warmer temperatures, we've had some rain as well, and so the temperatures are projected to be in the 40s, even the low 50s, today. So that's exciting. I thought I'd take advantage of this day and get out there and see if any mushrooms popped up in the last few days. We're probably not going to find a whole lot of choice edible mushrooms and in fact many of these probably won't even be mushrooms at all but will probably just be other fungal species like a lot of crust fungi. That's exciting right? We'll find some perennial polypores of course and probably a edible mushroom or two. Maybe three, who really knows. Now I'll probably see dozens of species because there are dozens of species out, but we're only going to focus on maybe four or five or maybe even six in this video. Now a little bit about this land where I am exploring. I'm on top of a ridge right now. So you can see a lot of oak trees. There are some cherry trees and maple trees as well. So a lot of those deciduous hardwoods. And then right behind me it dips down into a hemlock line ravine. So we got a lot of hemlock trees, a lot of yellow birch trees, black birch trees, beech trees as well. And I'm going to take a look at both of these areas and just see what we can find. Now I haven't explored this land in advance. I didn't really scout this out. So it's going to be as much of a surprise for you as it will be for me. We're just going to see what we can find. So thanks for tuning in. Let's go see what we can discover on this mid-January mushroom hunt in western Pennsylvania. So this is exciting. Right behind the camera when I was filming that introduction was our first edible mushroom right here. Didn't think I'd find a lot of edible mushrooms today and if this is the only one that I find, I'll be okay with it. This is Exidia recisa, the amber jelly roll. One of the many jelly fungi that we have here in Pennsylvania. So I recently did a video on this including the identification and cooking techniques. And so if you're unfamiliar with this species, just scroll through those YouTube archives or the Facebook videos and you'll find that video. And I just want to point out how beautiful this one looks right here. And it looks so beautiful because it hasn't been that cold lately. And so we got warmer temperatures and so this probably thawed out. Usually you'll find it frozen to the stick or frozen to a branch in mid-January or you will find it completely dehydrated. No worries with either of those conditions. You can just bring it home, you can thaw it out, you can rehydrate it in a bowl of water before cooking it up and it'll be good to go. Also I just want to point out that it's hanging out in this stick right here. See how it's just hanging off the ground? Usually you will find a city or size of hanging off the ground in a stick somewhere in the canopy. It could be higher than your head. And so you don't always have to look on the ground for this species. You don't always have to look at sticks that are just literally laying down on the forest floor. Look up a little bit. You can even see it at a distance. I don't know why that is, but I usually find Exidia recisa literally just hanging out in a shrub or somewhere in the canopy. So keep an eye out for that. Anyway, Exidia recisa, the amber jelly roll. Let's continue and see what else we can find today. So this is what heaven must be like, right? More fungi than you know what to do with. And I'm seeing lots of species hanging out in this habitat. And this is a perfect area to explore in the winter. Areas with a lot of branches, a lot of sticks, a lot of logs. And so whenever I find these particular areas, especially in January, I zoom in a little closer and see what I can unravel. So I just want to focus on maybe three species that I'm seeing right here, maybe four. This one's very unassuming when you look at it from the top. Looks like a little fungus, maybe even a polypore, but it's not technically a polypore. Whenever you flip it around though, the whole world seems to stop as you take in the beauty of the split gill or schizophyllum commune. So from the top, it's kind of whitish, velvety, and hairy, but from the bottom you see that it's got gill-like ridges. So they're not true gills, and it's not a polypore by any means, but they are folds or ridges. And this is not technically an edible mushroom, although some people probably eat this one. Not a lot of people around here eat this one. However, some people use this in medicinal mushroom formulations. I've never used this in that way, but if you look online and you look for schizophyllum commune, you might come up with some medical research and you might also see that some companies are putting this in their formulations. So flip around some of the mushrooms that you see on the forest floor because you may be pleasantly surprised to see how beautiful it'll look on the underside. So schizophyllum commune, the split gill. All around here, hopefully you can see some of this. This is a crust fungus that some people might confuse for the false turkey tail. And I guess you could consider it a false turkey tail. But this is in the same genus as the false turkey tail. So Sterium is the genus. This is Sterium complicatum. This is a crust fungus or a corticioid fungus. So from the bottom it kind of looks like a paint smear on wood. But it kind of musters enough courage to shoot out a little cap-like structure. And it's typically orangish or yellowish with some hues of gray in there as well. But this is not the turkey tail. It's not technically considered the false turkey tail, which is Sterium austrea. This one is Sterium complicatum. What else is cool around here? If you look really closely at this branch right here, it almost looks like it's kind of burnt in a way. 
almost like there's charcoal on it or like somebody peeled this away and just singed some of the bark here. What's really going on is a fungal infestation of a diatripe fungus. This is probably diatripe stigma right here. We've talked about white rot fungi, we've talked about brown rot fungi. This is classified as a soft rot fungus. So it likes wood with a lot of moisture and high nitrogen content. So if you look really closely and you see black splotches on wood, but you know that it's not burnt wood, it could be a diatripe stigma fungus. There's also something really cool going on here. You can't really see it from this view, but of course I will show you uh, some footage of this fungus. Kind of looks like lion's mane right back here. It looks like there's teeth coming out, like the beginning stages of lion's mane or a heresium fungus. This is actually a fungus known as Sarcodontia setosa. And how I know it's Sarcodontia setosa, first, it's got those waxy like spines on it. It's actually a crust fungus, but if you smell it, it smells kind of sweet, kind of acrid as well. And it's yellowish, orangish, but it turns whitish as well, and you might see it in all of those colors. But if you're unsure if this is maybe a lion's mane fungus, or if you're unsure if it's a Sarcodontia setosa, smell it. And if you smell that it's kind of sweet or kind of acrid, then it might be Sarcodontia setosa. There are other fungi around here as well, but I think we're going to stop here right now up on this ridge area. We're going to go down and explore the Hemlock Ravine and see what other fungi we find down there. So I didn't head all the way down to the ravine because I'm finding all signs of fungal activity on my way towards the bottom. And I thought I'd stop right here because I see three species that I want to briefly discuss with you. You're probably really, really familiar with this one that's saturating this log right here. And I found the incredible turkey tail Tremetes versicolor. Now this time of year, if you're finding it in mid-January, you don't want to be so quick to harvest it. You want to check it out first because we're nearing the end of its season. Usually people are harvesting this late summer through fall, and you could definitely harvest it through winter. Just look at the underside really quick and see what kind of signs it's telling you. If it's mostly white on the bottom and it doesn't look too damaged on the top or around the whole mushroom, it's probably good to harvest. This one looks to be all right. It's slightly discoloring just a bit, but you could probably harvest this one. It'll still be very effective. Now, I don't need much turkey tail right now. I harvested a bunch a couple of weeks ago, and so I'll be set for a while. But if I happen to need any in the next couple of weeks, I'd probably come back to this spot right here, and it's saturating this entire log. On the way down, I picked up a little stick, and I got really excited because I found a fungus that I was hoping that I would find. It's really beautiful if you look at it really close. If you look at it from far away, you probably won't even notice that there's a fungus on the stick right here. And this is a brown spreading tooth fungus. It's a crust fungus that literally looks like it has brown teeth, and you usually find it on sticks or fallen branches. You don't really find it on stumps, and you don't find it on big logs. Now what's interesting about this, at least in my opinion, is all the name changes that it has undergone recently. So this was in the Hydnokiti genus for a very long time. And then in, I think about 2002, it was switched into another genus known as Pseudokiti. There's a problem with that though. There's already a genus of algae known as Pseudokiti. And I don't know if the researchers didn't use Google back then. Maybe Google was just new in 2002. So I don't know how they didn't know that that was already a genus of algae. So you couldn't call it Pseudokiti, although many papers were published stating that this was in the Pseudokiti genus. And then the most current name change is Hymenochetopsis olivacea. So this is Hymenochetopsis olivacea, the brown spreading tooth fungus. So look for this one on sticks and branches, usually the smaller sticks and branches and the deciduous sticks and branches. And then right behind the camera, you can't really see it, but there's a, an ash tree that's literally cut in half. So here in Pennsylvania, we don't have many living ash trees left. Right around 2007, most of them started dying, and right now you're not really gonna find many living ash trees, but I guess it's good for the fungi because you'll find a lot of species on the dead ash trees, including the one back there, and I'm holding it right here. This is the Thin Maze Flat Polypore, or Didaliopsis confragrosa. And it kind of looks like a turkey tail-like mushroom from the top, but it's thicker, and on the bottom it has maze-like tubes. And it's really cool, maze-like tubes in the bottom. On the top, the cap is brownish or grayish, it typically grows on deciduous standing dead trees. You might find it on logs as well. But the thin maze flat polypore didaliopsis confragrosa. Let's keep going and see what else we can find down in the ravine. Okay, so we talked about plenty of smaller fungi, ones that you probably wouldn't want to eat or wouldn't even use for medicinal purposes. So let's talk now about an edible mushroom because I did find an edible mushroom. The second one of the day, this is a brick cap mushroom, Hypholoma lateridium. I'm not too surprised I found this one. If you've ever found brick cap mushrooms, you shouldn't be too surprised that I found this one either because it's typically a winter mushroom. You'll find this, you know, October, November, December, even into January. 
and fresh as well. So we got a warm spell lately, a lot of rain, so I'm seeing fresh fruit in clusters. There are some older ones around here as well, so I'll leave those ones alone, but these ones look nice and fresh. If you're unsure about the identification of brick cap mushrooms, go through my YouTube archives or on Facebook and you'll find some videos that I've done on brick cap identification. Not necessarily a beginner's mushroom, but once you get to know it, you have no problem discerning between this and any of its lookalikes. Brick cap mushroom, Hypholoma lateridium. Here's an interesting one that I wanna point out because it kind of resembles two that we already discussed. This one kind of looks like the split gill, Schizophyllum commune, and it kind of looks like Sterum complicatum, the crowded parchment that we already talked about earlier. But this one is neither of those. This one is the crimped gill, or Plicoteropsis crispa. This one is in the Amylocorticialis order, which represents crust fungi. Even though it kind of looks like those two species that I just mentioned, it looks more like Sterum complicatum because the top is yellowish, orangish, whitish, but the underside has the key identifying characteristic. The folds of the ridges are crimped together. They're slightly wrinkled. It's not as clearly defined as you would see in the split gill, so it rolls that one out. And it's not completely flat like you would see in Sterum complicatum. It's crimped on the bottom, hence the name crimped gill. Now this one attacks usually beech trees and birch trees. You'll see that this one is attacking a branch from a birch tree. And it's a white rot fungus helping to break down the lignin cellulose and hemicellulose somewhat equally. And it is a species that attacks in the initial stages of decay. So this branch probably just fell off a few months ago. This is one of the first species to come and attack those plant cell wall compounds. After some time, once this wood is well rotted, you'll see other species move in. Maybe like another sterium species or even a flebia species. But this is an initial stage decomposer. Crimped gill, Plicotropsis crispa, check it out. Don't confuse it for those other two species. Not that you would use this for any edible or medicinal purposes. Still a fascinating fungus to find in the woods. Okay, so now for the grand finale. The find of the day, the biggest one, the choice edible mushroom, the one I've been hiding from you the whole entire time. Maitake, sheep's head, hen of the woods, Griffola frondosa, and all of its moldy glory. And so this one is definitely too old to eat. I'm not even gonna think about bringing this one home. However, I will keep this spot in mind and I'll probably come back next year and see if there's a fresh one available. So it's not too unusual to find it at the base of a fallen tree. Typically here, we're finding it at the bases of standing trees and it's helping to break down wood so it's somewhat parasitic slash saprophytic. And so if I come back next year, I'll probably find it on this spot. If not, that's okay with me because there's plenty of other fungi to explore in this forest. I also want to point out something else for you. Again, Plicotropsis crispa, you're probably wondering, why in the heck would we talk about this again? We just talked about it in depth. Well, on the way down to this spot, I found this stick that's unique because it has Plicotropsis crispa, the crimp gill, growing right next, immediately next to its lookalike, which is Sterum complicatum, the crowded parchment. So notice the differences between the two. We have the crowded parchment right here, which is completely flat, but it's orangish, and it does have a cap, some, somewhat of a cap. You can see it on the other side right here. But right next to it is the crimped gill, Plicotropsis crispus. So notice at the top of it, he's kind of orangish and whitish and yellowish, but the underside has those crimped folds or ridges. So crimped gill, Plicotropsis crispus growing immediately next to it. Like this is how close it is, that's pretty close. Immediately next to it's lookalike crowded parchment, Sterum complicatum. That's not a fatal mistake because you shouldn't even be bringing this home for medicine or food anyway. It's probably got no food value and there's very limited research on the medicinal value of either of these but it's beautiful to appreciate, to take pictures of, and then to leave behind and then keep exploring in the woods. Now, we're gonna stop right there for the day. We found plenty of species, and I hope you learned something today. I wanna to thank you for joining me on this mid-January mushroom hunt. If you enjoyed this video, I encourage you to stay tuned. Maybe in February, I'll release another one on a February mushroom hunt. Maybe I'll do it again in March as well. We'll see how I'm feeling. And I'll probably do it. I'm out here a, a whole lot. Anyway, thanks for watching this video. I encourage you to go over to learnyourland.com and join the newsletter. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me on social media at Learn Your Land, Twitter, Facebook, and a brand new Instagram. Thanks again for joining me on this walk. I couldn't have done it without you. And I'll see you in the next video. Happy mushroom hunting.